Poverty is a big problem. But what if the solution isn't as complicated as we think? One 30-year-old organization in Portland, Oregon, thinks it's radically simple. And it starts with one child at a time. Friends of the Children is mentoring on steroids, really. We're coming in early, age four to six, and providing that consistent, caring adult for 12 plus years, their whole childhood. Wait, how long? For 12 and a half years, no matter what. No matter what. Nobody else is really making that kind of long-term commitment as a prevention strategy. But could one adult friend really be enough to change the course of a kid's life? Every family, regardless of the circumstances, they want better for their children. We're not trying to take the place of a parent or a teacher, but come alongside and help them thrive. We'll meet Jimmy, a graduate of Friends of the Children, who started way back at eight years old. Without this program, I would be addicted to drugs. I would be dead. If they're right, this little-known model could hold a hard but unexpectedly simple key to tackling generational poverty in America. This is Stand Together Presents. Stories, ideas, and advice from changemakers tackling our biggest challenges. One. So there's generational poverty and there's situational poverty. Situational poverty, you know, you might lose your job or have a medical emergency, but generational poverty is something that continues with low education rates or involvement in systems like foster care, incarceration, mental health systems. Those kind of tough challenges tend to repeat themselves. When I created Friends, I mean, my vision at that time was really just I didn't want any other child to have the childhood that I did. Both my parents were alcoholics and lived in bars and taverns. I wish I had had a mentor or anybody along the way, but, you know, I never really did. So Duncan tried something radical. He created a program based entirely on relationships. That way, the kids and their families facing the most systemic obstacles would have a long-term trusted adult friend to support and care about them. It's very individualized. There's a lot of intentionality that is helping the child overcome the obstacles that have been identified in their individual lives. Which in turn makes the, the community and the neighborhood better, which makes the city better. Harry, see you. Ah. This is Jimmy, a graduate of Friends of the Children. When I first met Jemmy, I was so struck by his background. Every generation of male in his family had gone to prison, and he was so determined not to follow that path. And that's just not the type of person I want to be or the type of father I want to be to my kids. My father passed away when I was two, and then um, my grandparents raised me. I just saw so much a kid should not see. My environment growing up was there was a lot of, you know, drug addiction, mental illness. It was a very chaotic and dysfunctional household. It was normal for me, though. The real miracle with John is that there was no judgment and that he could see my world and not be afraid of it. John was Jimmy's assigned professional mentor from Friends of the Children. John became a bridge for Jimmy between school, home, and his dreams. What were your favorite things to do with John? The blazer games. We'd go to the blazer games and go snowboarding. It also like was a lot of confidence building. Like, you know, I can be around other people and not feel so different, regardless of my social status or, or what have you. But at 14, the relationship was put to the test when the last of Jimmy's guardians was in her last hours in a hospital bed. I had a room full of 30 people, including family, caseworker, you know, brought up like, hey, what's going to happen to Jimmy when she passes? And um, everybody in the room was like, well, I can't take him. I can't take him. And the only person that did step in was John. That was a huge kind of a revelation for me as a, as a kid, because here it is, this big life altering event and no families stepping up. John was like, well, what does Jimmy want? And I said, I want to be emancipated. He said, you know, let's start building your resume, let's start doing internships, and it changed my life. With John's constant support and guidance, Jimmy became emancipated 
and began his career at a high-end legal firm, breaking his family cycle and avoiding prison. And while John is no longer with the program, he's still in Jimmy's life and continues to provide support as Jimmy paves a prominent career for himself in the Oregon County court system, advocating for people going through what he survived. Without this program, I would be in jail, I would be addicted to drugs. And my kids will never have to experience that. It's that relationship that allows the friend to create resilience in the children, which is how they change and survive. It's all through this masterful work of really finding a child's spark and working on the individual problems they have to overcome. You just have this adult that's there to, to listen to your dreams and your wants and your wishes and everything, and they're doing everything in their power to show you the path. That would change anybody's life. 83% of our kids graduate from high school, most are the first in their families. 93% avoid the justice system, and 98% avoid teen parenting. So what's the key takeaway here? The U.S. spends over $744 billion on public welfare each year. Could some of those funds have more impact if redirected towards building meaningful relationships? For every dollar invested in Friends of the Children, the return was over $7, $900,000 per child. We are now focused on growing to being in more than 50 cities around the country, but really we think we can accomplish our vision that every child who needs a friend would have one. This approach is by no means easy, but it is simple. What if more of our programs, volunteer groups, and communities took on a similar long-term relationship model? Could the entrenched and cyclical systems of foster care and juvenile detention finally become relics of the past? Stand Together partners with changemakers tackling our biggest challenges. To see more stories, follow our channels. And to learn more about how you can partner with us, go to standtogether.org.